we're in a battle for power. I don't know how to contextualize it or describe it, but uh, it's clear that white folks in the capital and around and in places feel like they are losing their power or lost their power and they're gonna take it back through force and domination and overturning the capital. And frankly, what we understand, they were trying to do a revolution. I mean, that's what was trying to happen. They were trying to make happen in the civil war. There was a, a contest over power. Um, not sure our side would say that, <laughs> you know, that's how we look at it, but I do think that's what's happening. To build on that, Kelly, I feel like, yes, it is. I was going to say, what is the state conflict? That is the state of race and power right now and, and physical conflict right now, as we can see, um, although lots of conflict in, in, that is not physical, um, very emotional. And it, it is conflict because there are lots of wins on our side. And I feel like last week, I, was it last week, I kept saying, what a week we have had, right? It's like there's, it had been like this. And I want to acknowledge the, the wins, right? So Georgia um, and the power of Black, Black folks, Black women who've been organizing around voting for years um, and the, the fruits of that that people can see. Um, so, so it is conflict. I think there are, um, part of the, part of the state is that there are more people of color in this country, more and more people of color in the country. And therefore the numbers are shifting. And then the backlash is huge, um, and violent in response. So I think I, I would echo everything Kelly said and say that the, the conflict is, is, is because there are some some clear wins on the side of of right um, and the backlash against that. Good to see y'all's faces as well. I'll say that the state of race, I think the global majority uh, has successfully started to articulate just the impact of race as a construct in ways that we've never seen before. So things like technology, things like access to information have allowed for that kind of permeation of uh, a colorblind society to not be able to continue. And I think that there are some things in pop culture across both the US context, but even across the world uh, by power brokers who wanted us to believe that that was true, that race no longer matters, that racism is a thing of the past, uh, that the institutions that upheld it um, have either eroded and are no, no longer significantly doing so. And we basically said, bullshit. <laughs> and the global majority has been very successful, by which I mean people of color across this world, um, in saying, no, the impact is still very much so felt. And I can point you to a thousand ways where I see it every day, and you no longer have the privilege of not listening. So the state of race, I think, is evolving in that regard. And I think as it pertains to power, it's a similar thing that's happening. I, eh, maybe I'm naive because of this, I'm still maturing. I believe that there are a lot less nefarious and kind of evil people in the world than there are people who genuinely just wanna to live to see another day. They're the power brokers who have nefarious goals, nefarious uh, attempts that they would like to put out to maintain their power structures. And then there are those of us who just, again, wanna see our communities flourish, wanna see people have a good chance at life, um, who actually do have compassion more close to us than self-interest. Um, and so the power brokers, I feel like uh, the state of power in our work is really starting to identify where is power being monopolized, where is power being hoarded, and to speak plainly about why that has to change, specifically when we say we want to be collaborative, specifically when we say we want to be equitable. Uh, so the state of power in our work is we're just starting to speak more plainly about how we're experiencing it and how things need to shift if we actually do want to get to this world where uh, it feels like um, the things we say we want are possible. Yeah, I totally agree with Kat that, you know, these conversations are being had, they're bubbling up, like almost reaching a crescendo. It's just, it's everywhere you look, right? Um, which which is, is encouraging. And like, we have to also focus on the good and not like the whole road ahead of us. Um, but for me, you know, working in the justice system and, and seeing it close up, um, and also hearing about like all of the different um, police brutality cases that happened last year and the not so great outcomes um, after all of these months of organizing and protesting. I think for me, it shows that the foundation of the justice system is what really, really needs to change. And I think there's still a lack of 
like really viable solutions coming forward about how to change that. Like there's overt white supremacy and the clans folks. And then there's like what we've been accustomed to accepting. So I think that the road ahead, like it, it seems sort of bright, but it's also, you know, we can't lose sight of the fact that there's still this, this web, um, especially as it relates to policing and the justice system that we have to unravel and figure out. I can't talk about or think about race and power without also thinking about self-determination. When I think about the struggle over power, um, going back to Kelly, your original point, I feel like I, I sense the hesitation when you're like, you know, our side isn't necessarily fighting for that. And I think what our side is not fighting for is power over others. We're fighting for the ability to self-determine for ourselves. Like that's why we organize and we're building power for our communities so that we can determine our outcomes. I think what I experienced, what I have observed about how white supremacy has like reared its head this, in, just in the last year is actually a collective display of grief as a, as a parent of a toddler. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm just witnessing a huge temper tantrum on a mass scale. It's like the same as when I tell my kid that she like can't have another cookie. It's, it, it feels like I, I'm just witnessing her grief about like not being able to have another cookie and not to trivialize the, the impact, of course, of white supremacy and, and like and violence on our communities. But also like I, I think that's that's what that's what we're seeing is people who are just who are devastated by the fact that their power over others is being challenged. I, I do believe that we are winning. What we're winning is the ability to, 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 have, to practice self-determination.